Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. And I'm now answering question number six from the June 2019 <coughs> Mechanics M1 GCE paper. Um, this question here is about vectors. It says here in this question, I and J are horizontal unit vectors due east and north respectively. So I is due north, is due um, east and J is due north. <coughs> um, and they're given relative to fixed origin O. So it says two ships P and Q are moving with constant velocities. The velocity of P is three um, I minus two J kilometers per hour. So we've got the velocity of P is given by three I minus 2j. I like to use column vectors in my working. It makes life easier, I think. And the velocity of q is 5i plus 6j. So the velocity of q is 5i plus 6j kilometers per hour. It says at 9 a.m. the position vector of p is i plus 4j. So we can say that um, from o to p at 9 a.m., is equal to 1, 4. And the position vector of Q, O to Q, at 9 a.m., is equal to 7, I plus 8, J, 7, 8. It says, write down the position vector of P at time T hours after 9 a.m. And write down the position vector of Q at T hours after 9 a.m. So what we should know here, what we need to know here is that... <coughs> The position vector of a point, R, is given by R0 plus V times T. Okay, so R stands for the position vector at any time T. And R0 stands for the position vector at the start when T is 0. And V stands for the velocity vector. So if we apply this for uh, P, we can see that this stands for R0 for P. This is R0 for P. And this is R0 for Q. And this is the velocity of P, this is the velocity of Q. For, so for P, we can say the position vector of P, okay, um, let's call it RP, is given by its position at 9 a.m., that's when time is 0, which is 1, 4, plus T times its velocity vector, which is 3 minus 2. And for Q, We've got the position vector of Q at 9 a.m., which is 7, 8, 7, 8. So RQ is equal to 7, 8 plus T times its velocity, which is 5, 6. Okay, this is given in like vector form, all right? Um, I can write it in a form which is more familiar to what the way that they have given us in the question. So I could write this as, for example, the position vector of P, Therefore, is I could write it as 1 plus 3t i, that's the i component, plus, and I have 4 minus 2t j kilometers. That's the position vector of P. And for the position vector of Q, I could write it as 7, uh, 7 plus 5t i, that's the i component, plus... Um, the j component, which is 8 plus 6t j, and all that in kilometers. All right, so that's the position vector of p and q in the form of i and j, the way they gave us, gave us in the question. All right, so then it says part b. Um, it says, at time t hours after 9 a.m., o to p is r kilometers. o to p is r kilometers. Show that r equals minus 6i minus 2ti, minus 6 minus 2ti plus f minus 4 minus 8tj. Okay, so r is the position vector of the, basically not the position vector, it's the vector from q to p. All right, not the position vector, but the vector from q to p. So for example, if this is o, just say this is o, and just say this is p, and say this is q. All right, so what they've told us here is, um, the vector that they've written here in terms of t is the vector to, that takes you from q to p. That's what this vector represents, q to p. Now what we have here is this is our rp. This is the position vector of p at any time t. That's what this stands for. The position vector of the, the ship p. Is it a ship? Yep. 
the ship P at any time T. That's what that stands for. And the other vector here is the position vector of Q at any time T. So what we want to find is the vector from Q to P. So if we, if we look at this carefully, Q to P is like you're going minus RQ plus RP. You have to go this way from Q to O. You have to go from Q to O if you see that. Plus O to Q. You're going to go from Q to O and then O to P. Sorry. O to P. I can't go back again. Oh, Q to O, then O to P. So Q to O is like minus RQ. And O to P is like plus RP. So it's like saying RP minus RQ. That's what O to P is. That's what Q to P is, sorry. Q to P. So we can take these two vectors and subtract them. P minus Q. So I, I can write this in this form. I'll write it in this form. So I'm going to write it in, in um, column vector form. So I have here... 1 plus 3t, i, we don't write the i, and 4 minus 2tj. When you write it in column vector form, you don't have to um, write the i's and j's here. That's why one of the reasons I like to do it. It also makes it more organized. The top rows are all i's and the bottom rows are all j's. So 7 plus 5t, i, and 8 plus 6t, j. So we subtract these. So you have 1 minus 7, which is minus 6, and minus 3t minus 5t, which is minus 2t and you have 4 minus 8 which is negative 4 and minus 2 minus 6t which is minus 8t okay so that's the vector from that's the vector r basically r is o to p okay q to p sorry so r is q to p so r then therefore in terms of i and j is minus 6 minus 2t i um plus minus 4 minus 8t j just as we were told to show so there's the answer there for part b now part c is on the next page it says hence find the distance between the ships when p is southwest of q okay so let me bring up the okay so what we have here is the vector that takes us from q to p all right that's what we have here okay and the question says hence Find the distance between the ships when P is southwest of Q. Now, in this case, we have the vector that takes us from Q to P. Okay, it takes us from Q to P. So if P is southwest of Q, so say here this is Q. We want to find the distance when the ship, when P is southwest of Q. So southwest, if we forget our directions, that's never eat shredded wheat so southwest is in this direction so that means p is somewhere in this direction okay we don't know exactly where but somewhere in that direction it's exactly it's like this 45 degrees in this direction southwest means exactly in that in that bearing exactly halfway between south and west exactly southwest sorry exactly between south and west so that means this is 45 degrees and this is 45 degrees which means if i was to join a line from q to p like horizontally like this and then vertically that this distance would be the same as that distance this distance would be the same as that distance if i want to go from q to p if i want to go from q to p all right i'd have to go a certain distance in this direction which is let's say minus something times i Okay, let's say I won't have to say I'll, I'll write it in a column vector. I have to go minus something in this direction and minus the same thing in that direction because this will be an isosceles triangle. If this is exactly 45 degrees, then these two lengths will be the same magnitude. So you have minus k and then minus you're going to have to do um, minus k again. Okay, so south southwest. You've got to go negative i, negative, negative something i, negative something j. We don't know what that is, so we'll call it k. Right, so I know that's how I can get from q to p if p is southwest of q. So I know that this vector here, minus 6, minus 2t, and minus 4, minus 8t, is going to be, this is the vector that takes you from q to p, has to be of the form where you're going to have the same number on the top and the same number underneath. Okay, the same number on top and the same number underneath. It has to be of that form. All right, minus k, minus k. Right, that's how it can be um, southwest. So therefore, I can solve this equation by 
forming two equations, I can say minus 6 minus 2t equals minus k. I can say minus 4 minus 8t equals minus k. As they're both equal to the same thing, I can just equate these two. So I can just say that means uh, minus 6 minus 2t is equal to minus 4 minus 8t. They're both equal to negative k. So I can replace minus k with one of these two. Now I can solve for t. So I have minus 6 plus 4 is equal to, um, let's do it the other way around, keep the t term positive, minus 2 plus, minus 2t plus 8t equals minus 4 plus 6. That gives me 6t is equal to 2. So t is equal to 1 third. Um, now, they didn't ask us to find the time. They asked us to find the distance between the ships. So let's find the vector from um, q to p. Okay, let's find the vector from q to p. All right, um, so we can say the vector r, all right, when t equals a third, is going to be given by, well, we can replace this with a third. We know that the vector r is given by minus 6 minus 2t and minus 4 minus 8t. So we can replace the t with one third. So you have minus 6 minus 2 thirds and you have minus 4 minus 8 thirds. Okay, so it's just... 6 minus, uh, minus 6, sorry, net minus 6 minus 2 over 3. That gives me minus 20 over 3. And you got minus 4 minus 8 over 3. Oops. Minus 4 minus 8 over 3. That gives us minus 20 over 3, of course. It's the same on both because that, that works out nicely for us. We know that they're the same. So now we can work out the, the magnitude of this vector. So the magnitude of R when T equals 1 third, that will be the distance between them. It's the square root of 20 over 3 squared plus 20 over 3 squared, which would be the square root of, that's going to be 400 over 3 over 9 plus 400 over 9, which is 800 over 18. Okay, I can just take the, this. I can um, square this. I can uh, multiply by 2. And I can find the square root of the answer, which gives us 20 root 3 over 3, 20 root 2 over 3. So we can say the magnitude of R is equal to 20 root 2 over 3. Okay, so the magnitude of R, therefore, is, let's write that as a decimal, it's going to be 9.428, 9.428, da, so that's going to be 9.43 kilometers. Okay, so that is the, mm, the distance between the ships when P is southwest of Q. Okay, so there's the answer to part um, C of this question, all right? So when the ship, because we have uh, the vector from Q to P, then the vector from Q to P, all right, is such that you have to go minus something, minus something. Some, th some people just basically um, use this vector and they basically just, you know, write when this is equal to that, which is what we essentially did. But I want you to understand why we make that equal to that. When it's southwest and when it's northeast, then these two have to be the same because you get, you know, the same distance this way and that way. Okay, they both have to be the same. When it's in this direction, when it's um, northeast, and when it's uh, south, when it's northwest, sorry, and southeast, then they have to be equal to the negative of each other because one of them is negative, the other one is positive. Positive one, one is negative. Okay, but I like to set it out like this to make it clear what the method is, not just memorize a method just you know without understanding it. I prefer for students to understand. So that's why this diagram hopefully helps you to understand if you want to go from Q to P and P is directly southwest of Q, then you have to go the same distance this way as you do that way. And I've called that distance K. I just called it K, minus K, minus K. So from there to there, it's going to be minus K. From there to there, it's going to be minus K in terms of vectors. And then that's, you know, when this is true, that's when they're going to be southwest and you see that because these worked out to be the same number we know we're on the right we're on the right tracks here okay 
So um, then we had to find the distance. The distance is the magnitude of the displacement. This, this tells us the vector um, that takes us from P to Q that time, from Q to P, sorry, how to get from Q to P. We want to find the distance that, that this represents, so we find the magnitude of it, and there's the answer to that question. I hope that was clear. Okay, um, there are other methods of doing this, using the two position vectors, but they say hence here, so it means using the answer to part B, which is what we found here, which they already gave us as well. So even if you didn't know how to do part B, for example, uh, you could use the answer from part B, which they gave us, and continue. So that's five marks. That's another tip that's very important, actually. Some people look at a question, and they, they don't know how to do part A, they don't know how to do part B, for example, but you can do part C without even having done part A and part B, if you understand that concept here. So don't throw away the marks of a question without reading the question first. Okay, always read the whole question and say, all right, hold on, I can do part C. I don't know how to do part B, for example. I can do part C using what they gave us. That's why a lot of questions they have show that, show that, um, to help you uh, not lose marks, uh, kind of like unfairly, yeah? So you know how to do a certain thing and, you know, you can't do it because you didn't do the first part of the question right. They're trying to avoid that more and more as... Um, they go on, so that's why they, a lot more questions have this show that kind of business. But then, when it says show that, you have to be very careful to show your steps properly, not leave out bits. Okay, anyway, so there's the answer to question six. Um, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist over here. Other questions from the topic of vectors can be found in the playlist down here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link, and don't forget to check the description under the video and look at the links there. They might be useful for you for now or even for next year if you're taking a two next year or even for your friends who are doing IGCSE as well. Thank you for watching and see you soon.